Hi, this is David Larson. I am the Associate Chair for Performance Improvement in the Radiology Department at Stanford University and welcome to the Radiology Improvement Team Education Program. Today we're starting at the very beginning with the most fundamental question of quality improvement and that is, what is quality? So here we are at Quality 101 and the short answer is quality means consistently doing something well. There are many other definitions out there but this is my favorite definition and I'll show you why. So for example, we might say that we would define quality in one circumstance as a final emergency department report turnaround time within one hour, 90% of the time. Or, along the lines of a project we're currently working on, we might say that quality is that all 10 positioning criteria are met on at least 90% of mammograms. The reason why this corresponds to the definition that we've established is that when we say final ED report turnaround time within one hour, or all 10 positioning criteria met, that is what we're defining as doing something well. So we've now taken a very abstract idea of doing something well and we've specified that in a quantitative way. Similarly, when we say 90% of the time or 90% of mammograms, we've now defined what we mean by what level of consistency we expect. So again, we've taken something very abstract, consistently doing something well, and we've turned it into a quantitative specification. It's a way of starting with motherhood and apple pie, uh, something very abstract again, and translating it now into something we can all agree on, a measure, and then transparently determining whether we're achieving what we want to achieve in order to have honest conversations about what, if anything, we need to change. It moves us from glittering generalities to meaningful results in the real world. So let's see how our definition of quality, consistently doing something well, fits with others' definitions. For example, Joseph Duran, who is one of the originators of modern concepts of quality, described quality in terms of two aspects. The first aspect of quality is based on features or characteristics that the customer needs or desires. For example, a Jaguar XF is a luxury vehicle that is widely considered to have more desirable features than, say, a Toyota Camry. However, the second aspect is free from defects. The Jaguar XF was also named among the top 10 least reliable cars in 2012, whereas the Toyota Camry was named the most reliable car in its class in 2012. So from that perspective, the Toyota Camry has a higher level of quality because it more consistently meets the customer's expectations. So again, we come back to the same definition. When we talk about desirable features, we're referring to doing something well, and free from defects refers to how consistently we do it. Now, who gets to decide how good is good enough? And who decides what level of consistency is good enough? This is very subjective. So we go to Peter Drucker, who is a management guru in the 20th century, and a quote that has been attributed to him is that he said, it should be borne in mind that an orchestra does not play for its own benefit. Its purpose is to perform for an audience and to give the highest attainable satisfaction. In other words, as much as we would like to think that the purpose of a company is to make a profit, or that the purpose of a job is to make a salary or gain some kind of professional satisfaction, really our companies and our jobs exist primarily so that we can provide a service or product or some benefit to another individual. I hope, we all hope that we do make a profit and we do have a great salary, we do have a lot of professional satisfaction, but that's not the primary purpose why they exist. They exist primarily for the customer. Therefore, the person who ultimately decides how good is good enough or who decides what level of consistency is good enough is the customer. Now, what do we mean by a customer? Especially in healthcare, the word customer can have a negative connotation. And when we say customer in this context, what we really mean is the recipient of one's work, or the reason why we are ultimately in business, or the individuals to whom we are ultimately accountable. In, in healthcare, we don't have customers, we have patients, and I absolutely understand and respect that. We really need to recognize that what we provide for our patients is more than just a business transaction. I respect and honor that. On the other hand, we definitely have individuals to whom we are accountable. We have recipients of our work, no matter what field we're in. So from that perspective, everyone has a customer, including we in healthcare or we in radiology. In addition to the two aspects of quality that we talked about earlier, quality can generally be categorized into three domains. Those are technical quality, service quality, and costs. 
And technical quality refers to how well you do the thing you're in business to do. Service quality refers to the experience you provide to your customer as you do the thing that you do. And cost is pretty self-explanatory, meaning how much does your product or service cost the customer? So from the customer's perspective, it's cost. From your perspective, it's price. So these domains become the basis for a quality management program. You make sure that you consistently do what you do well, make sure your customer loves working with you because you ensure they have a great experience, and do it as efficiently as possible. When speaking about healthcare in particular, we often look to the Institute of Medicine's 2001 report, Crossing the Quality Chasm. And the Institute of Medicine articulated six aims for quality in healthcare. They advocated that healthcare should be safe, effective, patient centered, timely, efficient, and equitable. But if you step back and look at it, you see that these aims, for the most part, fit in the three general domains. Safety and effectiveness are elements of technical quality. Patient centeredness and timeliness are aspects of service. And efficiency refers to cost. Equitability refers more to how resources are allocated throughout the greater health system. Now that we've defined quality, how do we achieve it? How do we make that happen? At a fundamental level, the process is that we first determine who is our customer, then we determine what it is that our customer values, we decide specifically what we are in business to do, and then we consistently do that well. So obviously this is an extremely simplified representation, but we're going to spend the next few months learning how to operationalize this. In summary, quality means consistently doing something well, and it's the customer who determines quality. Quality improvement, then, happens when we determine what our customer values, we translate those values into something that can be measured, with measures for doing something well, and measures for consistency, and then we change our organization so that we do things well with more consistency, or that we do things better than we were doing before. This is quality improvement. Thank you for watching. This is David Larson with the Radiology Improvement Team Education course.